What is going on deck builders? Welcome back to another episode of Super Budget Commander. I'm your friendly neighborhood host Alex and today I have a very unique deck in store for you. Rona, Disciple of Gix is the mastermind behind this artifact heavy combo focus strategy and I hope you enjoy it. And you know the drill, a super budget commander deck has a maximum price of $50 and most cards in this deck list can be purchased for less than $1 each. And don't be fooled by the low price tag, a super budget commander deck has a clear consistent strategy and is built to win. So without further ado, let's get started. Rona, Disciple of Gix, is a 3-mana Artificer in Demir Colors. Her Enter the Battlefield ability exiles a target historic card from your graveyard, which can then be cast. And for 4 mana, you can exile the top card of your library, and so long as it's a non-land, you can cast it. Rona is one of the most unique commanders out of Dominaria. Any deck built around her has to be specifically tailored to suit her abilities. Playing with Rona at a high level will require skill and patience, but if you're willing to put in the effort, this deck will serve as a great starting point. Rona has a natural synergy with artifacts, so it just makes sense that the core of our deck is also built around artifacts. Not only are mana rocks great at getting us off to a super fast start, they are also integral pieces of our game winning combo. Some of the more underrated artifact pieces in this deck are Traveler's Amulet, Burnished Heart, and Renegade Map. They make for fantastic early game plays to fix our mana and make sure we have all of our colors available to us, plus they're easily recurrable with Rona and really cheap to recast. There's nothing better than getting a nice discount on the casting cost of our artifacts, and Ethereum Sculptor and Foundry Inspector are perfect for that. Milliken and Deranged Assistant are the closest thing we're going to find to mana dorks in these colors. They have another purpose though. They can also potentially put artifacts or sagas into our graveyard that we can then recur with Rona. Don't sleep on Dark Ritual either. This is a great way to get an explosive playoff when we need it the most. Blue and black are the most potent card draw colors out there and this deck definitely has its fair share. Baleful Strix is a great example of value in this deck. It's a fantastic chum blocker, draws us cards, and is a perfect target for Rona's ability. Speaking of great recursion targets for Rona, Oath of Jace is really nice. Because it's a legendary enchantment, we can target it with her ability if it's in our graveyard. And that's not to take anything away from Mystic Remora or Monastery Siege either. They both are fantastic additions here as well. You'll notice a lot of our card draw effects also put cards into our graveyard. In a graveyard friendly strategy like this, you have to think of the cards in your graveyard almost as an extension of the cards in your hand. Because we're a combo deck on a low budget, we don't have access to very many tutor spells, so we have to rely on drawing a lot of cards as a way to pulling our combo pieces. We also have a bit of versatility with cards like Aether Spellbomb and Nihil Spellbomb. They can act as spot removal or draw us a card in a pinch. Crystal Ball is our thrift shop sensei's divining top. A little top deck manipulation never hurt anyone. Trinket, Trophy, and Treasure Mage are no-brainers here. Cheap to cast and fetch us important artifacts. Shred Memory and Muddle the Mixture are perfect for a super budget deck looking to combo off. All of our important combo pieces are 2 mana, so these can get those into our hand. Limdol's Volt is another perfect fit here. Being able to manipulate the top 5 cards of our library until we get a set of 5 that we're really happy with is just amazing. All the fancy card draw and tutor spells in the world won't save you from creatures trying to beat down your door though. We have to have ways to prevent that. Executioner's Capsule is highly abusable here. Perfect for taking out those pathetic non-black creatures. 
No surprise, right? The blue deck packs a nice little grip of counter spells. Perfect for irritating our opponents and protecting our big plays from disruption. Unfortunately, things go wrong sometimes, and when they do, it's important to have a get out of jail free card in the form of mass removal. Especially mass removal spells like Nev Disc and Steel Hellkite, which we can get back if they happen to get blown up. You know what's cool? Turning all of our mana rocks and our dopey little artifacts into an angry robot army. Say hello to March of the Machines and the Antiquities War, both of which are going to give us the ability to smack our opponents in the face with a soul ring. We have a solid amount of artifacts at our disposal just waiting for their robot potential to be unleashed. And if the angry robot army doesn't cut it for you, you can always do what all the other cool kids are doing, the Dramatic Reversal Isochron Scepter combo. With just a few mana rocks at your disposal, you can potentially make unlimited mana of any color you need. Imagine how sad the rest of the table will be when you cast Exsanguinate where X equals 500. Or you could partner with your boy Nico Bolas and force your opponents to discard their entire hands, sacrifice all of their non-land permanents, and lose three life endlessly until they die. And if you're missing a way to kill everybody off, you can always pump some mana into Pull from Tomorrow and dig until you find a way. Or dial 1-800-RONA and activate her ability until you find a card off the top of your library that you can use and win yourself the game. The best way to upgrade these budget decks in a hurry is to improve the land base. Right now the deck is functioning on exclusively basic lands. That should change. You need more dual lands, and lands that can get you any color that you need and that enter the battlefield untapped. Inventor's Fair is another must-have for this particular strategy. An artifact tutor on a land and it's super easy to activate too? Oh yeah. After you address the lands, the natural next step is to improve your artifacts. Artifacts are kind of the whole point of the deck after all. Start with stuff like Mana Crypt and Mana Vault, which are low cost and get you tons of mana. From there, move on to things like Sensei's Divining Top, which are the ultimate in top deck manipulation. If you plan on sticking with the combo theme, the best way to dramatically improve the consistency of this deck is to include more tutor spells. Better counter spells like Flusterstorm, Swan Song, and Force of Will are also fantastic ways of ensuring that you get rid of threats you don't want to deal with and can protect your important combo pieces. And you can't forget about Cyclonic Rift and Toxic Deluge. These are flat out the best damn mass removal spells in the game. Next time on Super Budget Commander. Thank you for tuning in. If you want more videos just like this one, smash that like button. I'll be back in a few days with a brand new video. Until then, you know what's up. Stay classy, deck builders. I'll see you next time.